All right, this is our last bit of theory for now. The rest of the lessons of this unit will be practicing HTML and CSS, and also learning and practicing some basic design skills. So, web browsers. You've heard of them. You've used them, obviously, because you're using one right now to do this course. How many are there? There's lots of them. Chrome, Firefox, and Safari are popular nowadays. Netscape was popular back in the 1990s and early 2000s. But have you ever thought about how they actually work? What are they actually doing behind the scenes? Well, web browsers are in charge of rendering our web pages. What do we mean by render? When we say that web browsers render our web pages, we mean that they take the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files, and they turn it into the styled web pages that you regularly browse, like TikTok.com or Facebook.com. In this example, we have some HTML and some CSS. The browser interprets the HTML and it displays the content on the screen along with some default styling. That content is the sentence, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Then the browser interprets the CSS and applies the styles to the HTML. Here we've used the CSS to add a reddish background color and border to our sentence about the woodchuck. The browser will also apply any JavaScript that we've written. In the woodchuck example, we don't have any JavaScript. JavaScript is typically used for more complex effects that regular HTML and CSS are unable to do. For example, in the bottom right corner of this slide, you can see that we have a typewriter animation on some words. It actually looks like someone's typing out those letters one by one. JavaScript is making that happen. So the browser is in charge of taking HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files that the web developers have written, and it turns it into the nice styled TikTok.com or Facebook.com web pages that we often browse. But where does the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript come from? It's not like we have to download TikTok or Facebook desktop applications to use them. Well, you could go to the iPhone or Android app store and download the apps. You don't have to do that for those websites to work. We could just type in Facebook.com in our web browser and it magically works. Why is that? Well, we actually are downloading them every single time we go to Facebook.com or TikTok.com. These web pages are coming from other people's computers. Whenever someone else's computer is set up to send us web pages over the internet, we call it a web server. Now that definition isn't perfect, it's missing a few things that we'll cover in later units, but it's close enough to true for now. So what really happens behind the scenes is that your web browser asks the web server at facebook.com if it can have the web page. And the web server at facebook.com, which is really just another computer hooked up to the internet, says, sure, here's a copy of it. You can think of facebook.com as the telephone number of that web server. We call it a web address. We need web addresses because otherwise you wouldn't know which computer to connect to in order to get the correct web page. We'll go into more detail about web addresses near the end of this unit. Finally, I know some of you are going to ask the question, are we only allowed to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in the web browser? Historically, yes, but developers are getting tired of JavaScript. A lot of them like other languages too, so developers have recently come up with a solution. It's called WebAssembly. WebAssembly allows us to use many different programming languages in the browser. It's not super common yet. It's a quickly developing and changing technology. You'll likely be using it five to 10 years from now. We won't cover it in the course, but you should keep your eye on it. All right, that's it for theory. On to the HTML and CSS lessons.